There are historic turnout numbers across the country. It really is stunning, and it just goes to show the level of uncertainty we have before the election. My own home state of Texas, let's throw this up there on the screen, is absolutely wild. They have already shattered their record in number of votes that are cast this time around before Election Day than the previous election last time. Now, what you can see there in the shaded dark areas and in green are areas where they've had increased turnout. There's actually a big story to be told. What you can see is in the Austin, Dallas, Houston area, along with El Paso, highly Democratic areas, you're seeing shattering turnout records in the 100 to 115 percent over what it was in 2016 and 2018. And Crystal, I mean, that's what tells me these are those suburban voters, those counties that surround Houston, counties that surround Austin, counties that surround Dallas. These are all the new Texans that we call them coming into the state from California and from New York, almost certainly voting Democrat. They love Beto. Um, whether that actually turns a state, I don't know. Um, I think there's probably enough residual stuff for Trump to play with within the state, but it yeah. just goes to show you if you take that and extrapolate that across the Sun Belt, Georgia, and these huge Atlanta suburbs, Atlanta also has net migration um, for over the last 10 years, largely be from the same populations, suburban, white educated voters, Arizona, place like Phoenix and those other, Tucson, those areas as well, same story. I think that could tell a very big tale on in the Sun Belt in terms of what actually happens on election day. Yeah, I mean, that when I looked at that map, that was the first time when I was like, oh, Joe Biden could actually pull off the win there. I agree with <laughs> I, you. I, I, I still so. think yeah. that Trump is going to, but yeah. I think we have to understand that like this turnout that we're experiencing, because when you see those green, that dark green on that map, those are places that have already yes. exceeded the 2016 level of turnout. So they've already gone beyond what was cast last time around. And of course, on election day, a lot of people are still going to vote on election day. So you're going to have just this massive surge. Texas, one of the um, one of a handful of states nationwide that have already beaten their 2016 turnout level. So what does that mean for the electorate? What does that mean ultimately? I mean, I think it's anyone's guess here. And, you know, and the other question is how many of the mail-in ballots get thrown out and that whole piece. Um, I wanted to update you, too, on um, Nevada, because that was a state we were kind of talking yes. a little bit about last week because it had some pieces that are favorable for Trump. Uh, one thing, they don't have quite as massive of a COVID outbreak as some of other, the other states do. They've had massive job loss because of economic shutdown. So maybe I was thinking mm -hmm. the shutdown messaging there could land. They have a large Latino population. That's a group that Trump has performed better with this time versus last time around. Uh, John Ralston, who's a great analyst there, has been looking at where and when and how the early vote numbers have been coming in in Nevada and who does this every year. He's basically called it and said, no, Democrats have turned out in such force in the early vote that it's almost impossible mm -hmm. for President Trump to come back and win there. So again, another sign that the people who seem to be extraordinarily for sure energized this time around are those suburban voters. Um, Dave Weigel also had a piece at Washington Post talking about Minnesota and the way that the demographics there break down. It's another state that has a large urban and suburban population. This is one that the Trump team saga told us that they had yes, planned to times. put planned to put into play. He came very close last time around. This time around, it doesn't even appear like it's going to be close. They also, by the way, have a massive COVID outbreak. That's too. part of the issue, right? Which is, and I think that the substance of Weigel's piece was really just about get out the vote and how that all looked and how Ilhan Omar in particular had defied the odds there in her primary victory. But what it was also pointing to, I think, is that there is some level of uncertainty about the type of turnout. How the Ralston numbers, the Texas numbers that we have, and all that generally indicate what type of vote that that is. And yet, there's so much uncertainty. There's the lack of the door knocking. There's, I mean, ooh, I was riding through the city. It's a ghost town, right? Yeah. I mean, it's election day. Election day in D.C. is like, I mean, it's electric usually. And it's just not this time. Everything's boarded up, actually. So I just think that the level and the difference and all that cast the shadow where if there was ever going to be a big miss, it might be this time around. That being said, early vote almost entirely, usually Democratic. In Florida, as I understand it, is relatively tied in terms of the differences between registered Republicans and Democrats who are voting early there. There's a lot going on that could be happening on Election Day itself. 
And then I think COVID just cast this other blanket on top of all of it. Yeah. Well, who the hell knows? So uh, you all probably follow the fact that we're now reaching record. We, we have broken daily records record daily in terms of new caseloads. Um, people who study this, who are experts, say, look, it's in some ways it's worse this time around. On the one hand, the, the death rate is better. That's good. Hospitalizations are obviously going up right now. But in the first wave, you had these hot spots that were relatively contained. Yes. Now it's everywhere. And people can't even really pinpoint anymore. It used to be they could kind of tell, like, oh, I was at this event, or I went to a bar, or I was at a political event, or whatever. Now people are having a really hard time pinpointing when and how exactly they got it because it's just so widespread. One of the mysteries of this election a little bit has been that Wisconsin and Mich Michigan seem to be basically gone for President Trump. You'd have to have, like, an eight-point polling this for him to pick up those two states that he won last time around this time. But Pennsylvania has stayed a little closer. So the margin for Biden right now in Pennsylvania is about five. And if you look at the COVID map, Pennsylvania, look, they're not doing amazing, but they're doing better on COVID right now than a place like Wisconsin, Michigan, or Minnesota. And I have to wonder if that's playing into why that state has remained closer as others have moved away. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, in general, you can just see, I think the early vote numbers, this is likely the first and last election ever where you'll have more votes cast before election day than on election day itself. And all of the trends generally that we see, especially in some of these swing states, are within Democrats' favor. That being said, we're not going to know as much. Pennsylvania doesn't even start counting till 7 a.m. on Election Day. Yeah. It's going to take days for them to count all their ballots, millions and millions of ballots that have been sent in. I think that other states have already started counting, thank God, places like Georgia, North Carolina, and Florida. That's going to give us some early indication about misses, where things land, and so much more. Absolutely. All right. Tomorrow on Rising, what else? It's going to be the election show. So make sure to watch our special election night show. We change it. It's going to start at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You get an extra hour of Rising. We're going to have the latest results and analysis. Hill reporters from everywhere. They're going to give us they're going to give us by the minute reports. We have a stellar panel. Kyle Condick, Ryan Grimm. They're going to be here. You guys don't want to miss it. And we will see you all tomorrow. Remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Also, don't forget to like and share as well. I cannot believe that tomorrow is election. Election day, but Let's I'm go. very excited for it. So catch us here tomorrow morning and catch us here again tomorrow night at 8. Have a great day, everybody.